So let's start. My name is Lena. I'm an Android developer. Wait, what? I thought that would be a talk about backend development, you would say. Right, let me lower your expectations first. What you're not going to learn during this speech is how to build a backend from scratch. You will definitely need a little bit longer than 15 minutes for that. And if you're interested, I have a series of blog posts where I documented my journey through the uh, Kotlin backend development. And uh, what this talk is also not about is uh, um, it's not going to motivate you to change your uh, profession to backend developer. Uh, because those things are very complicated and backend guys really deserve all the pay difference they get. And also they don't have any fun with UI, so I cannot really motivate you to do that. As the title says, I'll give a brief, brief overview over my experience building a backend for the first time and doing that in Kotlin. This talk also has an alternative title and I will tell you how I started, what tool I chose, for my backend and why I think it's a great skill to unlock. So how did I get here and why did, did I want to learn backend development in the first place? Uh, wasn't I satisfied with my regular Android development job? You know, there is so much cool stuff in software development which you don't get to play with at work and then you start working on your pet projects. My first Pet project was back at university when I just started out with Android development and it was a vocabulary builder. I'm pretty sure almost uh, everyone here has tried building a vocabulary app. Uh, clap your hands if you're one of us. No vocabulary <laughs> builders. <laughs> okay, um, I didn't know anything about backend development back then. I heard something about HTTP and stuff but uh, I had no idea what it has to do with app development. And uh, that's why the backend in my vocabulary app was kind of local. I had a txt file saved in my assets folder and then I would import it and save it as a JSON string in shared preferences. And then similarly, I would refresh my shared preferences whenever the words count changed or when the user learned a new topic. Days went by, I dipped my feet in web development, uh, build a web app with Node.js, build a backend for a uni project uh, in Dart, and uh, then I finished uni, got an Android development job, and after this point, I never really had to do anything with backend development anymore. I was just comfortably consuming APIs and sending requests with Retrofit or Ktor. But then, one day I decided I want a new pet project. And as I was working with KMM a lot back then, the app part was rather clear to me. I would use Ktor for networking, Coin for dependency injection, UI would be in Compose and Swift UI, but I still needed my backend because I needed the data. My experience so far was either with Node.js or the Dart framework. So I started building my backend with Node, and soon I realized that I'm quite bad at JavaScript. I mean, I could follow the tutorials and uh, build a basic server, but once I needed some custom logics, it uh, came with an increased learning effort, and it felt like a drag, and uh, I didn't feel like mastering JavaScript. So I thought I built Android apps in Kotlin, and I use KMM to build iOS apps, so why not try building a backend with Kotlin? Of course, I didn't want to jump on it right away, even though I was bad at JavaScript. I did invest some time into learning Node.js and then Dart, and I wasn't ready to just throw it away, so I decided to compare what are my options and research a bit on Kotlin backend development. The rest of this talk, I uh, will speak about what questions I had and what answers I found. First question that I asked the um, Kotlin community was, is it reasonable to start backend development with Kotlin? Maybe uh, there is something else that you can recommend. I've heard good feedback about Go, for example. Or should I rather leverage my Java knowledge and go for Java frameworks because they're more mature? 
Also, having had worked a lot with uh, KMM in Alpha, I wasn't really sure how happy I would be learning backend development um, as a beginner in that KMM experimental mode. The answer to these questions can be summarized in one sentence. Kotlin is awesome, and why learn Java or Go when you can have it all in one language? If you're an Android developer, this will make a lot of sense to you. At least it was quite convincing for me, so I decided uh, to go with Kotlin. And my concerns about the experimental nature of things were kind of justified. It wasn't as easy as copy-pasting uh, some Node.js tutorial project code, but still there was the magic of Kim P, which made up for it. The biggest advantage of having a Kotlin-based server is code sharing. And I had a separate module in my app with the models and networking interface, which I could share with my common um, module and the backend module. And if I wanted in the future to build a web app, then I would be able to share it with it too. What's more, there is a number of options for beginners to start with. Now you must be wondering what options are there and what technology I chose. My initial thought was simple which framework would be the easiest for a beginner. Kotlin Spring probably benefits from the maturity of Java Spring, but I have seen and heard uh, more feedback and uh, more about Ktor implementations recently. Also using Ktor on the client side in uh, KMM apps uh, might facilitate learning backend with Ktor. Or maybe there is something else completely different out there Let's take a look. Kator seems to be a quite popular option for beginners, and this was exactly what I went with in my pet project, Game Pizza. So far, I've had a lot of positive experience with it. Even though it's actively being developed and it's quite new, it's still very easy to use. The documentation is crystal clear, and even migrating to new major versions, which were coming out quite quickly, wasn't a big deal. Whoever writes documentation for Ktor, you've done a great job, and if you can hear me, thanks a lot for that. Another widely used option for backend development um, in Kotlin is the Spring Framework. It's especially popular in corporate environments, so if you're seriously thinking about changing your domain to backend development and continuing doing it professionally, then learning Spring may be a good idea, and it could give you a competitive edge Ktor has the huge benefit of being very simple to use and uh, smaller, but Spring, on the other hand, is a, a full-blown modularized one tool for everything. Moreover, there are other Kotlin frameworks uh, and toolkits for backend development besides Ktor and Spring. By no means, it's an exhaustive, exhaustive list, and I haven't tried uh, any of them, but here is what I found out. Micronaut is a Kotlin-compatible framework. It's less supported than Spring, but it's set to perform better, and it has shorter startup times thanks to their redefined memory consumption concept. Vertex is a toolkit, it's not a framework, but it works for building reactive systems on top of the GVM, and it's not an one solution, uh, all-in-one solution, but it provides you with building blocks to create your own solution. Hexagon is another toolkit. Um, it's written directly in Kotlin and is aimed at server applications. It focuses on simplicity, clean architecture, and has quite nice documentation. HTTP4K is another toolkit written in Kotlin and for Kotlin users. If you want to go beyond the basic core functions, then you have to integrate other libraries. On the good side, you can use whatever fits your case the best. But it might take time for you to find the libraries that go well together. As you can see, there's a lot of options to go with, and which one you choose depends totally on you. It depends on how lightweight, how easy, how flexible, and how well supported you want it to be. By now, um, you must have made your choice. But how do you actually start using it? 
For me, the easiest way has always been learning by doing. So I went with Ktour and little by little, I learned how to build my backend and uh, documented it in my blog. My experience can be summarized in 10 steps. I will quickly run through them. Don't worry, the code snippets and uh, pictures aren't there for you to memorize and understand deeply. They're more of a designer choice. Um, I started with creating a starter KMP project, which is quite easy with the KMP plugin. In this step, you create a um, shared module, which is divided into Android, iOS, and common. And of course, you can extend your basic starter project with other modules, like backend. And that was exactly my next step. I added a backend module, and uh, that was my dedicated place for all the backend experiments. As I went with Ktour, I had to end the add the Gator dependencies to my backend's module Gradle file, and after that, I could set up the basic server. Of course, I wanted my server to actually do something useful, so I added my first written function, which returned the basic boring hello. After that, I wanted to test my server locally, so I learned how to use a shadow jar and to create a package. So I built it, ran it locally, and it worked. Next challenge was preparing a database that stores all the recipes. I went with the JetBrains exposed framework coupled with the Postgres SQL. I added all the dependencies first, then I created the necessary tables and entities. And uh, this was probably the most challenging part for me, as I always found database management and all that stuff pretty complicated. Then I created a local source implementation so that I could connect it to the REST API. To connect all together by injecting the local source in the server, I used Coin. And it was also a good surprise that I could use it not only in my KMM apps, but also on the backend side. Then I also added more useful endpoints for my app like get recipes, add recipe. And as a chair on top, I implemented image hosting with uh, Amazon Web Services so that I can use such mouse watering pictures like this. And finally, I deployed my backend first on Heroku, then on Fly.io, and uh, I could happily use my backends for my KMM apps. So far, I've been patiently listening to my story, so my motivation to start learning backend was rather clear. Um, it was my pet project, but what if your projects don't uh, need a backend which you want to build or just rely on public APIs? Why do I think it's still good for a mobile developer to learn backend development? In another speech on KMM, I mentioned that KMM needs multi-platform developers. Becoming a multi-platform developer means having a certain set of skills and tools. Not that those are required, but they are nice to have, and it's good to be a versatile developer. And backend development is especially valuable as it serves every front-end platform. This will not only make you grow professionally, but also contribute to the quality of your projects. Also, it's much easier to explain to a backend developer what you want or what's your problem if you have dipped your feet in backend development yourself. Understanding how backend works can improve communication between the teams. To sum up my speech, KMP is not only about mobile apps. The biggest advantage of KMP is that you can build everything. You can build websites, desktop apps, and Kotlin doesn't only work for Android apps, as many may think. You can build microservices for Kotlin. You can build a backend for your app. And I think you should try. So thanks for your attention. And